Okay, I have no ideas for a good intro to this video, so I'm just not going to do one. The first thing I did for this project was remove the side panels from the server rack that this project is going to go into, both because they're unnecessary for one thing, but also because they're actually what I want to use as the material to build this entire project from. And once I had them all apart, I took the panels over and stuck them in my definitely for metalworking wagon vise and started cutting off all of the folded over corners with an angle grinder. So now that I have everything down to size, I've just got the back plate here propped up with a few welding magnets. It doesn't actually need to be square right now. But what I need to do next is actually disassemble the server from the PC case that it's in now and get the parts on here, the motherboard and the power supply and stuff so that I can figure out where I need to cut out the I.O. slot and the power supply slot. And to make sure everything's at the correct height, I'm just going to take some of these M3 6x6 standoffs that I'm going to mount the motherboard with later and use them upside down while I trace around the I.O. shield. And I didn't actually record any video of this, but I basically just held this panel up to the back of the pre-existing computer case and traced around everything, and that's how I got all the lines I needed to cut to for the power supply and the I.O. shield and everything. And once I had all those lines, I could actually start hogging out some material, and I just started off by chucking a random drill bit in the drill press. I wasn't really picky with the size, just something that would fit inside the lines of the PCIe slots. And this just basically gives me a border to cut to, same as how you would do with a drill bit and a jigsaw with wood. And I originally tried to be delicate with this using a rotary tool, but I was burning through cutoff wheels so quickly I just had no choice but to switch back to the angle grinder, which was a bit more aggressive, and it did heat the steel up and warp it a little bit, but it was really my only option. But once I got through the cutting, the hard work started in with over an hour of filing all of the PCIe slots square, and then going back and forth grinding the motherboard slot into square as well. Alright, so a couple of things I've gone back and done that I forgot to do earlier or mark out for is this little V-groove around the power supply outlet, as well as this little slot up here for the brackets on PCIe cards to fit through. And while I was at it, I went ahead and also cut out a slot in the front of the server for the grate on the hard drive rack. And I went with this hard drive cage because it was the cheapest one I could get real quick that had hot swappable hard drive bays, as well as the ability to mount a fan in front of a grate because I want this to be the front intake fan for the server. So now I'm gonna do something I'm probably gonna regret and start welding this together. And what you saw there was just tack welding the case together. I'm going to go back and properly weld it later, but for now I wanted to get started on a way to actually mount that hard drive rack inside of the case, and for that I used some of this 3.5mm wide stainless steel. Now it doesn't actually need to be stainless, but it's what I had on hand that was just the perfect size to fit these screws. So once I had verified that those pieces I cut fit just how I wanted them to, I took them back over to the welding vise and stuck on a couple of little tabs at a right angle. <laughs> They're not at all square, but they don't need to be. They just basically need to act as a couple of washers to actually hold this bracket down into the bottom of the case while the side attaches to the side of the hard drive rack. And so with those little tiny brackets completed, I could bring the server case back on over to the workbench and actually check to see if everything fit correctly. And you can see here that the brackets stick onto the rear end of the hard drive cage with uh, two screws, one top, one bottom, and just, just listen to that. I love the sound of a good ratcheting screwdriver. This one's a snap-on in case you're wondering. Yeah, that, that's not going anywhere. I don't know if you can actually tell on camera. You can see it a little bit there, but this was actually flexing the entire case. Although, I did kind of lie when I said it's not going anywhere, because I do need to actually immediately remove it from the case, because I am now going to actually properly weld the whole thing together, and I don't really want to ruin that rack.
Now I was really struggling here, partially because I'm not very good at welding, especially thin sheet steel like this, but it was also because, as I found out halfway through, there was a crack in my welding mask, and I could not see very well, so that's going to be something to fix. So now that I had construction on the case finalized, I needed to actually figure out a way to mount this into the rack. So I pulled the rack out and pulled the rails out, and I actually had to completely remove them from the rack for this, but I laid them on the sides of the case and just marked out where I needed to drill some holes for some bolts to go through. Now, if you're paying attention here, you might actually notice that the heads on these bolts are too thick to slide in and out of the guide slots on the rails. I did go back off camera later and just work those down with an angle grinder so that the case will slide in and out of the rails like normal, but this was fine just to test. So for several weeks now I have had the server sitting in its desktop case, inside the rack mount case, in the rack, and as you can tell this, this, this is not correct. But the one tiny little detail that's keeping me from migrating all of the components from the desktop case into the rack mount case that we've been building is that this case still lacks any kind of a power switch. And I've got one here that I want to use, but I have not figured out a good way to actually mount it yet. Two hours later. And a good amount of procrastination later, and I decided to just get to work on it. I had been waiting on it for weeks. I just drilled out a hole that was big enough to fit the stem of the button I wanted through it, and I was gonna figure out the rest later. But in a bid to delay any kind of further progress from taking place, I decided now would be a good time to clean off the front of the case with some alcohol and spray paint it. I didn't really have a pattern here, I just went for some colors. And I really rushed this and only got this one really bad angle of it, so to make up for that, here's some soldering. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. And unfortunately at this point there was no delaying it any further, I had to figure out a way to mount this button, so I stuck it on temporarily with some hot glue, and then tried surrounding it with epoxy, and I just kinda hoped for the best here. The steel was actually still painted on the inside around where I put the epoxy, I had no idea if this would hold, so far it has though. And so with the power button installed and the hard drive rack reinstalled, there's nothing left to do but assemble. Not the Avengers. And not that kind of server either. That, yeah, that kind of server. So with all of the components finally migrated into this case I've been building, there's nothing left to do but put that case in its rack. Now as far as storage goes, I'm currently booting from a 120 gig laptop hard drive, which I do plan to upgrade to an SSD at some point, and for just file storage, I currently have two Seagate drives, one is a 500 gig and the other is a one and a half terabyte. And I also plan to upgrade these to some multi-terabyte NAS drives that I can put into a RAID configuration at some point. Now as far as the rest of the system specs go, the motherboard is an old gigabyte board that takes a AM3 processor, specifically I have the AMD FX4100 in here, I have 8 gigs of Corsair DDR3, as well as a Radeon 6572 gig for the GPU. Now, if you're curious how all of this old hardware actually holds up as a server, I queued up these six movies all at 1080p and played them back on various different devices, and you can see here that the system never really went above 5% resting. Now, it did spike to 15 or 20% every time I added another device, but that's not a big deal, and the RAM never went above about 1.5 gigabytes. Now if you're curious about the software side of things, I'm running Open Media Vault 6 for my operating system, which is built on top of Debian, and all that really does is just manage my SMB shares, so then to facilitate using it as a media server, I use Jellyfin. 
And if you aren't familiar with Jellyfin, well, it's a free and open source platform for hosting your own media server, and you can arrange your media by genre, alphabetically, by release date, however you want. It automatically pulls metadata as well as information about the cast and crew, and you can also set custom metadata, and there's an app available for literally any device you could think of, and I've absolutely been loving using this. I cannot recommend it enough. So with those final notes on software, that's basically everything you need to know about how I built this. It's really not a very complicated project, it's basically just a metal box with some holes in it, but it was so much fun to work on and I am so excited to be back to making videos. Speaking of which, I hope you enjoyed this video, it was a bit clunky and all over the place, but it was fun to make, it was a fun project, and let me know down in the comments if there are any other server or electronic related projects you'd like to see in the future, as well as maybe any questions about something I may have forgotten in this video. So with all that rambling out of the way, all that's left to say is feel free to click some buttons down below depending on how you felt about the video, and maybe I'll see you in the comments section of the next one. Have a great rest of your day, and happy making!